everybody. So we need to talk about a term that gets thrown around a lot. And so I want to start off with some definitions, right? Let's let's make this very clear. So what I want to look at is the term gaslighting. And what we're going to do, zoom right in here so you all can read. And this is an article created by Psych Today. I think it's got a pretty good definition. We can look for others if we want. If you find a better definition you like, please post it in chat. Gaslighting is an insidious form of manipulation and psychological control. The victims of gaslighting are deliberately and systematically fed false information that leads them to question what they know to be true, often about themselves. They may end up doubting their memory, their perceptions, or even their sanity. Over time, a gaslighter's manipulations can grow more complex and potent, making it increasingly difficult for the victim to see the truth. How Gaslighting Works The term gaslighting comes from the 1938 play Gaslight and its film adaption. Gaslighting can occur in personal or professional relationships and victims are targeted at the core of their being, their sense of identity and self-worth. Manipulative people who engage in gaslighting do so to attain power over their victims, either because they simply derive warped enjoyment from that act or because they wish to emotionally, physically, or financially control their victims. How does gaslighting begin? A relationship with a gaslighter may seem to start out quite well. They may praise the victim on a first date and immediately confide in them such as such disclosure before any intimacy has been established. Establishes quick trust, it become, it's part of a tactic known as love bombing. We'll cover that more in a moment. The more quickly a victim becomes enamored, the more quickly the next phase of manipulation can begin. A gaslighter will initially lie about simple things. The volume of misinformation soon grows, and the gaslighter may accuse the victim of lying if he or she or they question the narrative. They typically deploy occasional positive reinforcement to confuse the victim, but at the same time, they may attempt to turn others against the victim, even their own friends and family, by telling them that the victim is lying or delusional. How do you know you're being gaslit? A victim experiences increasing self-doubt as the gaslighter insists that what he or she or they remembers, thinks, or feels is wrong. The manipulative individual will introduce lies in a more sensitive air arena aimed to disrupt and distort foundational aspects of the victim's being, wearing them down, establishing confusion, and forcing them to rely on the gaslighter's version of reality. Is gaslighting ever unintentional? It is possible for an individual to manipulate someone without realizing they are doing it. Importantly, though, the gaslighter still we enjoys wielding control over the mind and behavior of the victim, even if they cannot articulate or acknowledge this fact. Some people engage in manipulative behavior because they witnessed it frequently as a child, most often in their parents. Regardless of a gaslighter's level of self-awareness, the behavior is never acceptable, and ignorance of the phenomenon should not be accepted as an excuse for manipulative actions. So I want to cover a couple more things, and we're going to get into this shit. Love bombing. So love bombing is a cult tactic. What it is used for, in most traditional terms, is the idea that imagine you're going to go to a group. This is like the 70s or 60s. You're going to like a love-in or some kind of group that's like talking about radical change. And they're really sweet to you. They're really nice to you. And they like pour a lot of affection and a lot of compliments. But then you say something that may go against their views. Say, maybe the war is okay. Or maybe polyamory is not your thing. Suddenly, all that love and all that connection, gone. Notice the actual vacuum that creates. Love bombing is a tactic that manipulates very real social psychological phenomenon and pushes people to comply via operantly conditioning them to only do things that go along with the person, the group, the cult, the country's behavior. So the idea of gaslighting goes hand in hand with this. 
because in order for the person to start to trust your variation of reality, they have to find a way to get your trust. I can't just walk up to a random person and say, you're wrong. That's not how this works. There's intentional ways that you gain this person's trust so that you can push back. Love bombing is a particularly insidious one. While I know not everyone's a fan of it, um, Film Theory by MatPat has a really great video on this talking about how this works in regards to um, Fifty Shades of Grey. He actually goes through and outlines very clearly how the main character, not the girl, the guy, um, actively uses these tactics. I think it's a worth a watch. Check it out. But I bring it up in regards to this video because we need to understand what this is. Notice the language that's used here. Disrupts and distorts foundational aspects of the victim's being. Now, we have to be very careful with this language because dealing with situations such as joining the military or being part of a religious order also can be ways to challenge people's foundational aspects of self. Zen, for example, which I'm uh, ordained in, Zen, by all rights, is about breaking down the sense of self and going there, but it's done in the context, hopefully, with a trusted teacher and in the context to give someone a greater sense of liberation, not to gaslight them, not to further confuse them or wear them down, but get them to a place where they have a better sense of self-understanding. Right? Does that make sense? So while it's very true that some religious orders, some Zen orders, hell, can be incredibly toxic and gaslighting and love bombing, that doesn't mean all of them. We're not trying to make large swapping, you know, swath generalizations. We're just trying to talk here. What gaslighting isn't is disagreeing. And I say that from personal experience. I'll try to keep this vague, but there was a point in my life where I had a dear friend who was helping me with a, a group, a project, and due to a conversation that we were both having publicly on a social media and in DMs, there was a confusion to which I stated my experience. And when I pushed back on them saying, that's not my memory of those events, I got yelled at for being somebody who was trying to gaslight them. I actually lost that friendship and ended up having that person completely split off. But was my disagreement gaslighting? No. That doesn't actually meet these definitions because there was never a point where I was love bombing this person, just showering them in compliments and gifts and whatever else I could to get them on my side. And there was never a question of their sense of identity. There was only a question about the factual data of those memories. The only way this could have been related to their identity was the conflict between the project we were working on together and the project they were related to with somebody else who I had some conflict with. But this was not an issue of me trying to tell them these things didn't happen. It was an issue of me saying I have a different memory of these or they weren't aware of something. Do you see the difference? Do you guys understand the actual difference here that I'm pointing at? We have to be really careful how we use these terms. And this is why I wanted to bring this up today. This term gets thrown around all the fucking time. All the fucking time. In every place, forever and ever. And the reason being is, is that in a lot of cases, the reason why this gets thrown around so much is because people want to, in some ways, infer or assume that the other person who's disagreeing with them or has a different memory of events is trying to manipulate them, is trying to push back and say that what they remember isn't real. But the reality of the situation is that that's not gaslighting. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because I have heard everybody on the left misuse this term. This is a very specific type of manipulation that's used by completely uprooting a person's sense of self and their perceptions of reality. 
And for us to throw this out anytime chat disagrees with us or because somebody is essentially disagreeing about a factual piece of information is just not great. So let me speak about myself again. So in the video that came out saying we need to talk that went over specifically the order of operations between the Lindsay Ellis video, the Lily Orchard video, and specifically my interaction with Levy on Twitter. I referred to in my rant that this was an act of gaslighting, and it was. Because while this person never did love bombing, the way they present themselves in their videos gives me the impression that I'm dealing with a reasonable person who wants the good in the world. But not only did this person lash out at me, but lashed out at one of my community who was trying to connect us for a project or an idea, might I add, a community member who is now one of my moderators for the Discord. This person did nothing wrong, so there's no reason why this, why Levy's behavior is acceptable. The reason why I call what Levy did gaslighting is because I was given a false impression based on those videos that this person was going to be reasonable. And when I interacted with them on Twitter, I was given essentialized and generalized statements about what this person perceived as my actual accounts or my actual goals. The idea that I was propping up abusers and racists and any other fucking thing you want to put out there was factually incorrect. This is why I dislike dealing with these sections of the left and sometimes in the right, because the essentializers, the people that do this and generalize, will state that you're platforming someone who's bad. Right? Well, they're talking about racist, transphobic, homophobic, or whatnot. But what happens when you disagree? What happens when you say, I don't think that person's racist? And I don't mean that in the right leading, like, oh, this is just you getting your panties in a twist, but like in a very real, no, I don't think I agree. In the case of the Lindsay Ellis situation, I don't think she was being racist. I think she was making a structural comparison. And I even said in my video that if in case I'm wrong and this was racial, even then I feel like it's more of a microaggression, which was addressed by people far smarter than me. This is the problem that I have. People want to essentialize to such a degree as to not actually and meaningfully engage. They want to make a quick judgment, right? We talked about this in our videos about overgeneralizations. We talked about this in our tendencies to sort of confirmation bias. We come up with a snapshot of who we think that person is, and then we tell them who, we, who they are. Well, you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you're a bad person. I don't see myself that way. I'm trying to have a nuanced conversation with you and tell you that I don't think your data lines up. In fact, what I think you're doing is just repeating simple talking points to shut down the conversations. To just generalize and say that I am this or I am that is a thought terminating cliche. It's a way in which to keep me from arguing because now I have to defend myself. It's nothing short of an ad hominem. It's not an argument. It's an insult. What's going on in chat? Let's see. Barely on this topic, but it's so weird to me how he or she got normalized when they is there. Yeah, that's... Says normativity is a bitch, uh, Agosia. Um, Tiamat said, I really, really wish we had an easy specific term for gaslighting-esque effects that aren't intentional or aren't consciously intentional. Um, so there's a difference between intentional gaslighting and being triggered and trying to assume power. I would actually argue, um, Tiamat, that from a certain perspective, and if you can follow me on this for a second, from a certain perspective, I actually believe very clearly that people, when they're in a triggered space, will attempt to dominate the situation if they're in the fight side of fight, flight, or freeze. Sometimes that's lashing out and being physical, but more often, especially with people who have better control of themselves or aren't just inherently, you know, physically violent, will often, from a triggered position, try to assert control. Look back at the Riley Grace Rashong discussion with Demon Mama or her behavior on Twitter. Again, don't go harass her. I like Riley. 
I think her comments on socialists are dumb, but she does genuine good way of don't fucking, don't fucking your asses, women, for the love of God. But understand that once there is suddenly, suddenly a trigger in wanting a fight, all of a sudden what happens is, is a desire to control. And this happens in personal relationships. I can tell you very clearly in my relationships where if I start feeling out of control or insecure, I can get that way. And I know others who do the same because what we're trying to do is shut down the situation. But that's very different than gaslighting because gaslighting has an intention built into it on the notion of trying to undercut or downright erode someone's foundations on reality and their memory. Right? I think we got to be really careful not to confuse this either with situations where the person we're dealing with is legitimately not um, remembering things right or forgetful or maybe there's, you know, something cognitively going on. And I think we got to be really careful not to mix gaslighting in with that. Um, if you're dealing with anyone, you know, who probably the most extreme example I can think of is like dementia or, you know, age related um, cognitive issues, right? Where suddenly maybe people don't really remember the details. They don't really fully remember what happened. But that's still not the same uh, as gaslighting, but I could see it still having the effect on on an individual kind of still doubting themselves about it, right? Still doubting themselves about the memory or what's going on. Um, so I think I think we got to be careful about how we're approaching these topics. Yeah, because I think the problem is is that there is this tendency to look at a person's behavior assume the worst, which by the way, you are psychologically programmed to do to your loved ones and your partners, full stop. Right? If you're triggered and you're upset, then the likelihood of you losing your shit on your partner is pretty fucking high. Because the thing is, is that we tend to show parts of ourselves, the more insecure and more um, disordered parts of ourselves when we're in a intimate relationships, not with strangers. Right? So we have to understand this very clearly. When we talk about this phenomenon, we need to look at it from very clear points because to just throw it around waters it down. It's the same thing with the term narcissist. People throw that out and don't know what it means. I've interacted with exactly one narcissist in my entire career and they scared the shit out of me. And I'm someone with another cluster B personality disorder. Right? So let's see. Um, Blaine said, misuse of gaslight and triggered is one of my pet peeves. Agreed. Freddie said, yeah, so pissed off with gaslighting being thrown around when it only keeps its power as a term within the limits of the definition. It's not just bad faith, lying, or disagreement. Fucking true. Absolutely, Freddie. Brittany said, um, Riley is good, but I don't feel comfy supporting her. Yeah, she had some really dumb takes. It's fine. I think she's brilliant. I just think she's gets pissy. Um, Thanagore, um, would you say there's a term for someone who's generally trying to manipulate your perception of what happened other than lying? So if they're generally trying to manipulate you, I would say that would fall under the term of gaslighting Thanagore. Because they're trying to change your perception. They're not disagreeing on a point or having a different memory about something. If they're actively and intentionally trying to do that, then I would say that's the case. Tiamat said, okay, so autistic here, my social reads can get a bit screwy. Would it be appropriate to bring up the specific circumstances I'm thinking of here, given it's something that's happened to me? Sure, Tiamat, if you feel safe to do so. Realize we are on a channel and it is public. Katie Ann said, um, studies show that our brains tend to remember things incorrectly or fill in blanks with what we missed. So it should be normal to acknowledge that some things will just not be remembered or will be remembered incorrect. Absolutely. Katie, in fact, you bring up a really good point. Katie Ann brings up a really good point because if you look at the data, this is why eyewitness accounts of crimes are such a pain in the ass because they're absolutely subject to memory issues. One thing we have to be very clear with memory is this. Your memory is subject to your current emotional state. If you're in the midst of a trigger and upset, your memory is going to be very different than, say, your memory about something in a calm state or if you're feeling happy versus sad. This stuff is important. 
Are you looking for someone to put that? There you go. I still need it in view. Um, Thanagar, in terms of narc thing, what term would be better for people who are in subs, like raised by a narcissist? Um, say more, Thanagor, could you? Um, but go, he's a... The way Riley handled Calvin Garrett's situation really turned me off of her content. I feel you. Um, I watched that video and was really confused um, by a lot of it. Um, I just don't feel like Calvin gave up any actual any actual changes and was drunk through the whole thing. So I just take him as like an idiot. Um, I just look at him as any other right-leaning creator. Um, I don't think he has anything of value to add to things. And I think he's about two steps up from me for... Um, you know, from fucking Caitlyn Jenner. So, yeah, I'm right with you. So do you guys understand what this is? So, like, in regards to talking about this, we throw these terms around in a colloquial sense, and I think sometimes what we do is we undercut what's actually happening. I don't think this is always the best descriptive term, even in the colloquial sense, right? Because when we bring this up in just sort of the average dis discourse way of, like, oh, this person's trying to tell me my memory's wrong, no, that's not quite how that works. Tiamat, so I'm thinking about when I was 12 or 13 and went to my parents to talk about wanting SRS. It was the 90s and I didn't have that kind of info I do now. When I did that, my father responded, continued, we'll get back to that in a moment. God, I miss having chat on screen. I am I so sorry to everyone who's watching this video later. I can will show it off to the side. You just kind of have to look off to the side for it. Well, that's on mine, but yeah, that's and that's on the side of the YouTube video, so you guys can see it at least there. I just prefer having it in the video. No, it's way easier because then we then you know what we're responding to, right? Yeah, right. Um, so. TMS said, by questioning whether I was actually didn't have the term at the time, but trans and just unhappy with my existence. Uh, existing situation. He essentially brought himself and me to the conclusion that I think I know where this is going. I was just with and happy with my life based on question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, it's, it's want to be a girl. No, you're not a girl. Three is profit. Yeah, like it's, it's. So this is where I'm going to get a little like irritated with parents is that I think parents do this sometimes. I think sometimes they leverage the power in the relationship they have with children and try to tell their children what their experience is. I think there's a difference between questioning their experience in the sense of how did you come to that conclusion versus no, you're not. Because that's what that tells me. By trying to reframe the situation as you're not trans, you're just unhappy with your way of being. It sort of steers you away from the click conclusion you came to, which may be very true for you. So TMA, I would say that's gaslighty as fuck. Because there's a leverage of the relationship previously. It doesn't need to do love bombing. It's your fucking dad. Second off, there is a power there. It's trying to wield power over you to manipulate you to come away from that outcome. I see parents do this shit all of the time. Go back to my video on authoritarian parents. This is a favorite. By a manipulative parents who are passive aggressive, they don't lash out directly. They use guilt and they use gaslighting to tell you that, no, that's not how that happened. I've literally had parents of certain clients be like, oh no, that's just, that's not how it happened. That, that's not how they remember. And then they wonder why their kid is struggling. Right? Like, this shit's really hard. I would say, Tiamat, that is kind of a warp of perception because it comes to a different conclusion. It's sort of changing the premises. You're unhappy because of the gender you were assigned versus you're unhappy because vague life reasons, question, question, question. Right? To me, those feel very sim... Those feel very different. Brittany said, parents should also question about an experience, not just deny it. Like the kid I teach made a really right-wing comment and I didn't just say, no, that's not true. I turned it into a learning opportunity to read about it together. Super fucking fair. That's perfect, Brittany. Um, Danagor, you said above, so there's this subreddit called r slash raised by narcissists, which acts as a support code for kids of parents who this sub calls narcissists because they're more 
concerned with themselves or their children. So this is what I would say Thanagor is what's going on there. This is the difference between a colloquial use, that is the use of a word in average society, and the clinical worse of a, the clinical use of a word. Sorry, I can't speak tonight. Can't speak any night, whatever. Do you see the difference? So like with them says raised by narcissists. So if these are particularly egocentric parents who are fairly petty, childish, emotional, they don't take care of themselves, they don't really take care of the kid, does that meet the clar clinical definitions for narcissism? Probably not without more data and without someone to observe the parent. But does the word narcissist in this case communicate what we're vaguely pointing at? Sure. And in that context, I don't have a huge issue with it. I, I do wish we would use more clear terms like selfish parents or something like that. Because I can't know if every parent that's mentioned on that on that thing is by its nature a narcissist. I don't have their medical files in front of me. I can't make that assessment. Again, this is a subreddit run by people on the internet and you never really know what the credentialing of anyone actually is. So there's no like connection. True, Katie Ann. True. To, to real stuff. Um, yeah, no worries, Thanagar. Like, yeah, I, again, when you understand that when people use words, there's different engagement with them and different meanings. There was actually a discussion on this me and Brittany were having in the comments um, actually, no, was it Brittany or was it someone else? Actually, it might've been Simbel. Um, we were talking about the video on, um, discussing bi versus pan. And I had made a thing that I was going to make a clarification on. I'll just do that here is that I had said that in her video, Cat Black mentioned something about women who are bi or pan. And I was actually incorrect. Um, Simbel, one of our, our moderators and one of the people who's been really wonderful, the channel also as a patron um basically said like full stop they are by all rights um you know they're hetero they're straight cat black only dates men there wasn't any mention of women i just misremembered that my thing is that's data that i don't have a strong attachment to i don't feel like going back through the content because i just don't have the time i'm gonna trust symbol on that i'm gonna go yeah i probably remember it wrong so here's a retraction i don't think that's what happened in cat's video i didn't i, I must have misremembered but that's not Simbel trying to gaslight me. That's just simply me recognizing that my memory is shit and going, hey, this is something I need to keep aware of. We can even go one step further and say this. As someone who has ADHD, someone like myself who is neurodiverse, there is a danger in relationships of being gaslit. If you're with a manipulative partner who likes to try to convince you that you are by definition wrong then by then what happens is is that you start to really question your reality what up trojan slayer be good in comments or nightbot will yell at you um i love you um but yeah do you get this like understand this really clearly there's a way in which a partner can gaslight their partner based on their shit memory as someone with adhd that's a big deal. That's a huge deal, right? So we need to understand this because I feel like one of the things that happens in this situation is that we often don't critically look at this. And maybe that's like the, the fucking poster for the channel. Did we critically look at this? But I think that's a big deal. We need to. So does everyone understand this? Minerva Comfort said, by the way, Minerva, your name wins the prize for the day. I love Athena and her uh, Roman counterpart. The parents in that case are very emotionally apparent, a very toxic way. True. Fully agree. Um, but do you guys see this? Do you understand the concept here is that when we're talking about gaslighting, we can't just throw terms out. Things have a very fucking clinical definition. And my, my concern is, is that is that people just say things and don't really look at the things. Tiamat, I don't remember where exactly, but I remember seeing and hearing some conversation about gaslighting being specifically a conscious decision. So it doesn't have to be an intentional thing. So I would say, so the article is really quibbly about this. I would say this, I don't think it needs to be consciously intentional, but that doesn't mean there's not an intention. 
right? So people can be unaware of their agenda or their ulterior motive. So theoretically, someone could be having a motive to try to gaslight you and not be aware of it, but they could just be getting their jollies, as the article said, from having power. Um, let's see here. Anna Gore, as someone who with ADHD, I usually can see to what my wife says if she says I'm remembering something wrong unless I have actual evidence. So you have to be careful with that, Anna Gore. I'm not trying to in any way um, uh, say anything negative about your wife, but you have to find a partner who's very, very trustworthy in that regard. If your wife's great, cool, fucking do it. Um, But I think it's a really big deal to notice because... If you don't, if you don't recognize that, if you don't like recognize that um, that person has power in that relationship, that can get really rough, especially with toxic partners. So you have to be careful with it. Um, so just watch that. Just watch that. Trojan Slayer said, I remember the weird YouTuber who, I, who forced a mentally unstable Twitch streamer to eat his own... Yeah... Trojan Slayer, that's probably probably not a really great stream comment, but I'll say, yeah, that's really gross. Um, I don't know what that's related to, but yeah. Yeah, I, I'm feeling like we can move off of that one. Yeah. No offense, Trojan Slayer. Just wanna keep it, keep it, keep it focused. So, um, and I don't know enough about the situation. So there's another couple points here. What's the difference between gaslighting and narcissism? Gaslighting can be part of a narcissistic personality, but it is not a core trait of narcissistic personality disorder. A narcissist may be self-promoting and feel superior to others. A gaslighter aims to make another person question their own self-value, right? So gaslighting is a tactic. Yep, Tiamat, definitely stuff to talk to your therapist about. Remember, folks, I am not your therapist. I am just a therapist, so please talk to your therapist. Um, right? So we'll leave this idea here, but I want to be really clear about it. Use gaslighting correctly because otherwise we get into some really weird situations with this idea. Um, so yeah. So, um, Zena, did you have anything else you wanted to add before we call it? Um, I think I just wanted to clarify my earlier about like subs not... On, on Reddit not always being um, fully accurate. I always take some of those with a grain of salt. Um, just because you never really, like, the information that comes on these things, if you don't already have the data to know, you really might not know um, that something is wrong or inaccurate. And so I just always kind of take what I read on Reddit with a grain of salt and make sure that I am looking for a secondary source Right, because like in a lot of cases, not everybody may know the clinical definition that we're talking about today. There's a reason we're having this conversation, um, and so I want people to reach out and get help in you know the ways that, that work for them. But also, you know, as an outside reader, this person, you know, I'm gonna look for data when I need to. Right? Um, yeah, I think especially watching out for this as a pattern, I think would be like the key here. Like if it happens like once, right? We're not, you know, necessarily as concerned when it starts happening multiple times. I think that would be more cause for concern. Am I right about that? Yeah. So like a good example of this back and forth thing to watch out for is the idea that like, if your partner bounces between really extremes of like, um, I forgot to say this. So like really, really far extremes of something like, um, one minute, they're just putting a ton of freaking like care towards you. They're saying really nice things. They're doing all this other stuff. And the next day or sometime down the line, they're just trashing you. Now, sometimes that can be mental illness. That's not narcissism. Be clear on that. But if you start to notice this is a pattern where one day you feel great with them and the next day you feel awful, notice what happens when you feel awful. When they start to tear you down, does it push the conversation to a direction? Do you feel less willing to bring up fights? Do you feel less willing to bring up things that might upset them? Do you feel like you're starting to learn 
ways to avoid them getting upset. I actually think it's really important in relationships not to avoid making the other person upset. I actually think that that tendency can get really problematic. We've had actually had to watch for this in our own relationship. The tendency for us to avoid each other on a topic we don't feel like we don't want to bring up because we're scared often is some of the stuff that we really need to get into. Right? Yeah. I and it, watching how things get resolved. Do they get resolved? I think are the big keys. Is there a winner? Because if there's a winner in any kind of argument with your partner, spoiler alert, that's not a good fight. That's not a good conflict. Um, and Stark Mad, no argument there. I think Reddit can be incredibly useful. But anyway, yeah. so why don't we end that here? I wish you could say, as, oh, far, yeah, as, as far as ADHD and, and other stuff, uh, the things that I find really help, taking notes, take notes, have a journal, do a house meeting, write, take notes on things. You should um, do a video on house meetings at some point. That'd be fun. And if, if, you know, somebody really isn't remembering something, I just, I tend to just ask again, right? Like, if just didn't remember that she... <sighs> said that she would help me with something i just go hey you cool with helping me with this and just goes yeah sure like i've never had the answer be different um uh, generally you know i'm usually again. pretty agreeable as long as you're not an asshole in my comments <laughs> that's super true so those are just some of the ways that we handle you know this in a positive way because i don't ever want you know my partner to feel like i am ever taking advantage of not remembering things just because i remember i tend to remember stuff depending on my memory has a lot to do with chronic illness, but yeah. anyways. So yeah. I'll bring this up because Trojan Slayer said something really important in chat. Um, it's incredibly hard to have a relationship with someone because you want both comp company and power, and your partner does too. It's hard to strike a balance in order for it to be healthy. And I'll actually say this. The urge to have power in your relationship is not a healthy tendency. Yeah. I would I argue, actually... The reality is, is that the thing that's harder to do in that situation is to give up power. It's to be vulnerable. And I would say that that's the thing most people avoid. If you're trying to assert power in a situation, then that is where you get into the problem of starting to use that as ways to keep them in the relationship or keep them from leaving or keep them do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Power has no part in a romantic relationship unless you're doing kink. And even then, that is a... Agreed upon thing in specific scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole lot of negotiation there. So we'll leave that there. Um, thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this thing, uh, the idea of gaslighting and what your experience has been, if you feel safe to do so. Um, remember, they are curated, so don't say anything transphobic or just dumb. Um, but again, disagreement is welcomed as long as it is in good faith. Um, and uh, if you want, please like, uh, subscribe ring the bell so you can get notifications when my videos come up. And um, if you can, if you want, if you feel able to financially, please feel free to donate. Um, you can donate to streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip. You can do a one-time donation there. Or you can become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash transgirltherapist. We've added uh, another tier. We're going to probably add a sixth one soon. No, no, no worries, Blaine. Uh, you can go back through if you want. We're just going to keep going for the night because we, we've been on kind of a roll. So anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to, um, you know, share this and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.